So Monster Rancher 1 and 2 in Japan got a re-release port for mobile platforms and Switch console just this year. Monster Rancher 2 in particular is probably the most popular piece of Monster Rancher media with a lot of players coming from the PS1 era. Fun as it was though, this game was not easy. There was a lot of things that you needed a guide for if you wanted to even be half good enough to actually see the game's credits. This led to a lot of players researching on what makes Monster Rancher 2 tick. And in a few years, eventually, people started getting max monsters regularly. So when the 2020 version of Monster Rancher 2 came out, naturally, these advanced players wanted to get up to speed and do what they usually do again. And while it's still the same game, there are a few important differences that have a huge effect on how advanced ranching works. And this is what we'll talk about today. Before we proceed, here are some prerequisite knowledge that you will need to understand the rest of this video. So first, you must already know how to get at least 3 stats to 999 when ranching monsters. Second, you're aware of most of the hidden values that the game uses for monsters, especially when it comes to fatigue and stress. Third, you preferably have knowledge of some advanced racing methods that utilize the two points above. Otherwise though, you might feel a bit lost as to what these detailed changes are. With that out of the way, let's begin. So just a reminder to everyone playing the Japanese version of Monster Farm 2, both on the re-release and the original Monster Farm, the Japanese version of Monster Rancher 2, even in the PS1 original, had 100 weeks less of lifespan from all monsters compared to the NTSC and PAL versions. This means that if you are using an old English resource to play this game, make sure you plan out your lifespans using a minus 100 week from the English version. Plant pure breeds, for example, have 450 weeks, not 550. Pixies and tigers have 300, not 400. Dragons and phoenixes have 250 and not 350, and so on and so forth. So let's start with some of the important similarities first. First similarity is that almost all items still have the same effect and the exact numbers. This means that your popular items like Nuts Oil, Mint Leaf, Gold Peach, Silver Peach, Tablet, etc. still work kind of the same way as you remember them. You can apply the same concepts and calculations for these items when devising your raising method. There are only a couple of items that have big changes, the two of which we will actually be mentioning later in this video. Second similarity is that the combining algorithm is still the same. So, if you still remember your stat gain numbers, base stats, engineering matching stats, then that'll kind of still work here. But do take note that there are some monsters that are reported to have a different stat gain than before, such as a tiger worm now having a C in life instead of a D. I won't list them all here, but I'll be happy to list them down later if there's enough asking for it, although the research is still ongoing for this. It's still being researched on the Japanese side, so the list is still incomplete as of writing this video. Now we're moving on to the important differences. In particular, we have two items that we have to talk about, as these items really change the way that you're going to be ranching in 2020. So the first item we're going to talk about is the Gemini's Pot. The Gemini's Pot was mostly considered useless in the original PS1 version. It only reduced the stress of your monster once you hit 34 stress at the start of a month. In which case, you're already near 70 lifespan index already. All good raising methods don't even get close to 30 stress, so the Gemini's Pot was mostly useless for good training methods. However, the Gemini's Pot has received a significant buff that has people collecting this en masse now. So the original effect of Gemini's Pot was that it reduced the stress of your monster at the start by 3%, rounded off. Rounded off, this is important. It means that if you had less than 34 stress, the value would then round off to zero, making it useless. However, the new effect seems to be that the calculation for Gemini's Pot specifically now rounds up, which means that you will always get a stress reduction as long as your stress levels aren't zero. And the effect does stack for each Gemini's Pot you hold. This means that if you are holding 5 Gemini's Pots at the start of the month, and your monster has 20 stress, your monster gets 5 points immediately reduced from it, starting the month with 15 stress instead. You may already guess how important this is, but we'll get back to this later. 
For now, we'll be moving on to the second important item to talk about. Magic Banana So the Magic Banana was the main method that people used to consistently get maxed monsters regardless of how the monster started. With enough resets, you could make your monster essentially immortal using the life extending effect of Magic Banana. However, before the game got re-released, Koei Tecmo laid out 50 differences from the original game. And one of those differences was that they removed the lifespan effects of Magic Banana and they was changed into stress and fatigue effects instead. This was the talk of the Monster Farm 2 community for a while. But of course, once the game came out, research into its new effects immediately went underway. And with enough experimentation, now the new effect of Magic Banana is mostly determined. So get this. So first, Magic Banana still has the same effects to loyalty. There are three effects to loyalty. One effect reduces both spoil and fear by 10. Another effect adds 10 spoil but reduces fear by 10. And another effect which increases both spoil and fear by 10. Before, it was the former effect that added one week of lifespan. The second effect didn't have a secondary effect. And the third effect reduced lifespan by one week. So naturally, people went for the first effect because of its ability to extend lifespan by one week. Now the new effect seems to be as follows. So the Spoil and Fear minus 10 effect gives Fatigue minus 30. The Spoil plus 10 and Fear minus 10 effect seems to equal f Fatigue minus 15 or 16 and Stress minus 5. And then the Spoil and Fear plus 10 effect equals Stress minus 10. So now all of these have positive effects and those are some pretty important numbers too. Now we'll talk about a new advanced racing method using the two ch item changes that we just talked about. Because of these changes, people have devised a 4 week rotation which actually allows 3 straight hard drills without taking any lifespan hits. First, you need to gather 3, 5, or 8 Gemini's pots, depending on whether your monster likes, is neutrals, or dislikes the food tablet, respectively. You can win the Gemini's pot by doing the Gemini Cup during the 4th week of May like so. You can also use a Swaki Sweza to quickly win you one without disrupting the clock of the monster that you are currently raising. After that, you're ready to start this rotation. Week 1, feed a nuts oil and then hard drill. Week 2, feed a magic banana for the minus 10 stress effect and then hard drill. Week 3, feed a nuts oil and then hard drill. Week 4, feed a mint leaf and then light drill. Now let's start with some computations for this. So week 1, we're assuming that we start at 0 stress and less than 28 fatigue. In which case, a nuts oil will put us at 0 fatigue and 0 stress. A hard drill will then give us 15 fatigue and 12 stress. In total, that's around, I believe 15 plus 24, that's 39 lifespan index. So week 2, we will use Magic Banana's 10 Spoil and 10 Fear effect and that will put us at 15 Fatigue and 2 Stress. Lifespan Index is now at 19. And then a Hard Drill will put us at 30 Fatigue and 14 Stress. That's a Lifespan Index of 58, so we're still safe. Week 3, we'll feed another Nuts Oil and that will put us at 2 Fatigue and 14 Stress. Then a Hard Drill will put us at 17 Fatigue and 26 Stress. The lifespan index now is now at a very nice 69, just one point away from getting a lifespan hit. And now at week 4, we'll use a mint leaf which will put us at 17 fatigue and 13 stress. Lifespan index is now back at 43, and then a light drill will put us at 27 fatigue and 18 stress. That means lifespan index is now at 63. Now the new month opens, and the Gemini's pots take effect. Let's assume we have 8 pots. We now have 27 Fatigue and 10 Stress. Now let's assume that the monster hates tablets, which is the worst case scenario for a monster, and we'd feed them one. We now get 27 Fatigue and 0 Stress. Now week 1 of the new week, we open with the Nuts Oil and now we're back at 0 Fatigue and 0 Stress, exactly where we started. You can repeat this cycle without a lifespan hit, given that your monster doesn't fail or cheat and we scold them for it. In these cases, you should be resetting anyway, as cheating and failing aren't really tolerated in most methods. 
This means that the training schedule of hard, hard, hard light drill is now possible without any freezer methods. Now during a week where you need to use another item, such as a gold or silver peach, the easiest way to get back on track is to just rest your monster on the week they consume that item and continue the same rotation depending on which week you're already in, or you can substitute some of the hard drills for light drills to ensure that you're starting the month with less than 28 fatigue and zero stress. This is almost as powerful as the 4th week only raising method, though still not as powerful, but it does save you on a lot of real world time since the only mass resetting point is really the magic banana during the second week, where you want to get the effect that reduces the tense stress every time. Use this method for your monsters and you can reliably get a max monster on its second generation as long as you're able to combine it into having around at least 2000 in stats or around 2400 in stats when it's born. Don't forget to plan your combinations! So those are some of the huge differences with advanced breeding in the 2020 version of Monster Rancher 2. I hope people will try out this new method and catch up with the Japanese community as they fill the online play with maxed monsters. Now as for me, I don't know, I may just start posting some videos of random online matches soon with some of the monsters I've made. If you want to see some 2020 Monster Rancher 2 battles, then maybe I guess subscribe to this channel or something for that. God, I hate saying that, really. And with that out of the way, I guess that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Good luck and happy ranching.